Do you want to chat with an AI locally, privately, on your own computer with a full featured program? This video is for you. It's been a while since I made a tutorial on this program. A lot has changed since then. This is one of my favorite programs for chatting with an AI locally, and I'll show you why. First thing to do is update your system, sudo apt update. Next thing is sudo apt upgrade. Make sure all your packages are up to date. You can copy the name of the GitHub repo, paste it in so you git clone that repo. It'll download pretty quickly, move into that directory, and then you can run the start script. If you don't have the program already installed, this script will start the installation. When you get to this part, you select your video card, which is in my case, A for NVIDIA. You would select CPU if you're only on CPU. Once it's loaded up, you go to 127.0.0.1 on port 7860. To password protect text generation web UI, you can use the dash dash gradio dash auth flag with username and password separated by colon. And there's also a way that you can make a text file, have multiple usernames and passwords, then load the text file from the command line when you start the script. As soon as you have the web interface loaded up, you have to load a model in that you're gonna chat with. So in this menu on the left, click model. Over here in the upper right where it says download, that's where you enter the name of the model you wanna download. You have to get them from Hugging Face. In this case, we're gonna use small LM3, 3B as a test. This is also a really good starter LLM because it has such a small parameter count, it'll run on modest hardware. So this is a good starting point. You can see over here where the name of the model is, there's like these little boxes next to it. If you click that on any Hugging Face model, you can go over to your text generation web UI, click model, go to download, and just paste it into this box. You hit download, and it's just gonna download the model, and it'll give you a progress bar. Progress bar is a little bit buggy, but if you look at the command line, it'll show you. If you wanna download a quantized version, it's a little bit different procedure. Quantization is like compression for AI, if you're not familiar. I've got other videos explaining this, check those out. When you go to download a GGUF quantized version on Hugging Face, you have to click the files and versions versions tab, and you have to pick specifically which one of these files you want. In this case, we're going to run the Q4KS. So that means we're going to click on this link here for small lm 33 b 128 k q 4 k s g g u f This procedure is a little bit different. First, we're going to hit the boxes up at the name like we did before to copy it, paste it in, but then we have to go back and we have to go over here where the name of the model is and hit the boxes next to it to copy that specific file name for this particular quant. Then go over here and drop that into where it says file name for GGOF models. Now we can download that quant. After you've downloaded a model, now it's time to load it. So up here where it says model, you see this blue box with the white arrows? You have to click that to refresh the list. You can then pull down this list and see all the models you downloaded. In this case for testing, I have good enough hardware to run the 3B full size without the quantization. So I'm gonna click on that. After you do that, you click on load. You'll see down here on the right side, it says it's loading the model. You just wait, it'll load and it'll let you know successfully loaded. If you wanna unload a model, you click the unload button and it will say model unloaded. To load the GGUF, it's a tiny bit different because when you select it, you just have to go over here to model loader and make sure that llama.cpp is selected if it isn't already, it should be by default. Also with GGUF models, they spread out across your CPU and your GPU to balance the load. You can select how many layers are going to be offloaded to the GPU using GPU layers. This program will do the best it can to select how many GPU layers you can use, but you can always adjust this slider to change it if you want to play around with the setting. In our case, we're going to be testing the full version, so I loaded small LM3 3B without the quantization. Once the model is loaded, you need to set some parameters. So again, in the left menu, click on parameters, and these are all the settings for the model. What you can do is change things like the temperature. Temperature is lower, you get more accurate responses, but if you change the temperature higher, you get more creativity. You can change other probability settings if you're familiar with them throughout this page. This section is also where you can set the system prompt. If you scroll down over here where it says custom system message, you can set instructions or rules that the AI will follow while it's chatting with you. Can't do that with ChatGPT and other proprietary models because they use their own system prompt that's fixed. One of the advantages to open source AI within a program like this is that you can set your own custom system instructions. If you have a set of parameters that you wanna save for later to keep reusing with the same model or to use on different models, you can actually click on this little file icon here to save it and you can pick a name for whatever you want, like, you know, my params or whatever and hit save. And you can always load that up from this list later. The next area for settings before you start chatting is on the left-hand menu. If you go over to the character tab, what you'll see here is a place where you can actually create your own character model to chat with. You can even give it 
almost kind of like system prompt inside of the context, but you can also give it few shot examples and it even has its own tagging system. For this example, I've put in, you are an email writing assistant. I can click on save. We can give it its own name, like email assistant and save it. So then we can use this character again. Also in the pull down menu under example, this is a good thing to take a look at. You can set the personality for the character that you want to chat with. In this case, it says Yamada is a young computer engineer nerd with a knack for problem solving and passion for technology. It also has these tags of user and character. So you can give it few shot examples of what a conversation between you and the character would look like. You can even go over here and describe your own personality as the user. If you've already created a character and saved it, you can upload it from the upload tab. Next generation web UI is supposed to support vision, meaning you can give it an image and you can chat with what's in the image because it can see, but loading vision models in here often gives errors and it's hard to nail down the right one. So I'm not really gonna get into that. I tried testing it and I think my conclusion is that it's tough to run it. There is another program on GitHub called VLLM that's known for being a lot more compatible with vision language models. So maybe I'll test this one at some point. The next thing you're going to do is on the left menu, click chat over at the top. And this is where we're actually going to start chatting over on the right side. There's still a few more settings you can set, which I know might seem like there's a lot, but kind of the point of this program is you have a lot of flexibility and control over it. On the right side for start reply with, you can put anything you want in here. And every time the bot replies, it's gonna start everything it says with that same thing, which I find annoying, so I don't use that. Under reasoning effort, some models use chain of thought reasoning to think before they respond. And some of those models actually support setting how deep you want the reasoning to go. So. If you are using one of those models that supports reasoning and supports reasoning effort, you can use this pull down menu to decide how deep you want it to think, which of course uses more tokens and more resources, the higher you go. In our case, we're not using one of those models. And if you're using a model that does chain of thought thinking, it'll just do the chain of thought automatically anyway. Under mode, for the most part, you're gonna use chat instruct. This allows it to operate as a chat bot that understands language and does responses to you while also being able to take instructions. If you just wanna put it in instruct mode, you can hit instruct. If you just want chat mode, hit chat. But for the most part, the most common thing is to use chat instruct. Under chat style, this is where you can pick how you want the interface to look. So if I were to select the encrypted 777, it's gonna look different. And under the character tab, you can actually create an avatar for your character by uploading a picture. And that will show up under the encrypted 777 chat style. And you can just kind of play around with these and use whichever one you like. I just kind of leave it at the default. Under command for chat instruct mode, this is like another set of instructions that it follows. It's kind of like a prompt injection. It also supports these tags like character and prompt. Character and prompt get replaced with the bot name and the regular chat prompt respectively. In the lower right where it says character, you can switch between them easily. Over here where it says count tokens, that toggles the token count on and off if you want to see how many tokens have gone through your chat. The thing I did not really touch on right now is this box that says activate web search. That's for models that support tool calling and can do web search. We're not going to really touch on that today, but should you want to use a tool calling model for web search in text generation web UI, you'll have to check that box. On the left side here is a record of the chat history. As you start doing chats, it's going to save them here, kind of like the chat GPT interface, and you can delete them if you need to. The left side menu is also where you can rename a chat, start a new chat, or even branch a conversation and fork it into two different convos. If you have your chat loaded up and you don't really need those settings in the chat history on the left and right, these little arrows in the left right side, you can click to collapse those menus. I just ran a couple of quick tests and realized that this is actually more of an instruct model and not a chat bot. So we'll try this one for instruct mode and then we'll load a different model in for chatting. Just for now, I'm gonna click on instruct mode. I'll give it the instruction, write an email to Ubabuga, thanking them for how good their text generation web UI software is and for making it free. And we have our thank you email. It even wrote a PS and some notes. What if I actually send this to them and say that this was generated with their software? For back and forth, multi-turn conversation, I'm gonna use GPT OSS 20B. That's the open source model that OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT made. 
Unsloth has a GGUF quantization version, and I'm gonna go to files and grab, let's see, I don't know, QK4S. Again, to download a GGUF model, you have to copy the name of the model into the clipboard, paste it in, and then copy the name of the quant file that you want and paste that into where it says file name. Then you can hit download and download the model. I'm kind of glad the last one glitched out and that we have to try a different model for chat because that gives us a chance to test the GGUF model, to play around with the GPU layers, and to even change the context window. Because when you have a model with X length context window, you can actually shorten it down if the full context will not load into your computer. Oh, now reload the list, pull this down, select the GPT OSS 20B quant. Over here where it says GPU layer, it's automatically selected 15, but let's say I wanna bring that down to 14, I can just slide it down this way. And now it will use less of the GPU and more of the CPU. For the context length, we're at 8192, which is 8,000 tokens. Let's say we wanna kind of change that. You can slide this slider, or you could do something like input whatever number you want. You have to do the GPU layers and context text length change before you load the model. Because we're gonna to try to have a back and forth multi-turn conversation, we'll switch from instruct to chat instruct mode, and we'll ask it to write an email to OpenAI complaining that they don't open source everything. GPT OSS is a reasoning chain of thought thinking model. You can see where it says thinking, and if you click that, you can actually peer into its brain and watch its thought process. It'll then give you the response right underneath the chain of thought. GPT OSS, the open source model made by OpenAI, has now written a letter to OpenAI asking for more transparency. How do you like that? Now we'll test the multi-turn. So once you've given it a prompt, you can keep chatting with it. So I put in, what are the key points of this email? Summarize. So there it is. It gave us a little chart of the most important key points of this. And it says, in short, the email is a constructive complaint urging OpenAI to release more code and data. There it is. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope that helped you out. If you've had any experience with text generation web UI, why don't you drop a note in the comments? If you try this out, come back to the video later and let me know what you think. If you found some value in this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed and you want to see me do more tutorials about running open source AI and also testing new open source AI models as they come out, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when I make a new video, hit the notification bell. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Have a good one.